the purpose of this video is to show you how to prepare a solar panel to work with the wiring harnesses that come in our system cores. And this is developed over you know, our 28 years of installing these things and what we've found that has worked. So when you take a panel out of the box, it's going to have you know, almost every panel comes with what's called MC4 connectors now. And that's all well and good if you're seriesing out a bunch of panels set, set right next to each other on a rack, but doesn't always work on the roof of an RV. And we have had made a round cable that's light gray and very, very flexible as you can see. And this is what we use up on the roof. It's a UV resistant jacket and to keep it round, we had them put uh, filler in here so that it keeps it round. It doesn't turn flat like on the tray cables, which is what you mostly get for roof work. We wanted it to be round so that when we put it through a weather tight fitting, the weather tight fitting is going to clamp down around this and actually prevent water from moving past it. So knowing that we're going to be hooking to this kind of a cable instead of uh, long lengths of the uh, cable that comes uh, with these MC4s on it, this is much stiffer cable. See, it boings right back into the circle. And you're trying to lay two parallel lines of those down the roof of your RV in a neat and orderly fashion just is really hard to do. It's way easier to take a cable like this and put it down and it stays there, okay? So that's why we use this wire. So to prepare these ants to fit this wire, we have to cut these. And so what we've learned is you know, ultimately we want to have some strain resistance, uh, strain relief right here. So we've developed this little measuring tool that we put up against the uh, junction box there. And the minus cable, you know, gets cut at this mark right here, which is two inches shorter than the positive cable. And the reason we do that will become clear here in just a moment. So I'm going to cut this cable, the negative cable, right there. I pull this out. We're going to cut the positive cable right there. And we're just going to recycle these. It's still good copper and you can still get money for it. Okay? Rather than going to landfill. So we no longer need this. So then we're going to put some glue filled shrink tube butt connectors on the end of these wires and they're still marked plus and, and minus so you still know the polarity so we need to strip this wire Stripping about three eighths of an inch. Cross that. I'm gonna make sure these ends are snug. We're gonna take our butt connector, push it down over there, and use the part that's made for insulated connectors, not bare. And I give it a two-handed squeeze, and then I always do a pull test. I'm gonna do the same thing. On the other side, and crimp it down now. Do our pull test to make sure it's on there. Now, when you lay these out, you're going to see that now they're laying next to each other. And so, if they were cut the same length, these things would be side by side and it'd make this knot in the middle. So what we're going to do is we have another piece of glue filled shrink that we're going to slide over here. You always want to put your shrink tube on before you make your final connections because it won't go on otherwise. So, we're using black and white conductors and when you have this combination of colors, 
Black is positive, white is negative. And since our positive cable is slightly longer, now you can start to see why we did what we did here. Can you see that okay? So now I gotta strip these in. Same about three eighths of an inch. Okay, so now we're going to crank these together. I'm going to start with this one that's over here. It says minus, white is minus. Let's put these together now. Do our crimp on that. There's a cold pass. twist on that copper kind of keeps it so it'll fit into that barrel inside of this thing so now we have these two wires like that do my crimp here and we use broad tip crimpers here because then we're crimping a bigger piece of that barrel and we have better connection if you use those little black ones that are real thin metal, you just get this little skinny crimp and it's not as good a, a, a holding power. Yes. Okay, we've got this. We need to shrink this down, shrink this down, slide this up over like that and shrink it down just for extra protection since this is outside in the weather. And being smaller guys, we're going to use these lithium batteries in combination with this inverter, magnum inverter. Make sure it's inverting. Turn this thing on. I have to get away from the back of the module because we don't want to melt through that back sheet. And we're basically going to shrink this down. Takes a little bit to get the heat to the right place. I want to make sure we get it from both sides. And you, if you're paying attention, you may not see it on the camera, but having this black wire, you know when you're shrunk down because it'll It'll move in and you'll see that black come out. Uh, you'll see that it's sealed. And you'll actually see just a small amount of glue roll out the end and the end. And that glue till shrink is what's going to keep the water out of this connection and, and keep it good and tight. This is our first defense against the water. So we don't want water getting into these, so we want to make sure that those connections are watertight. This is simply to give it more protection and a little cleaner look and add one more layer of glue. So I try to push this about a half an inch or three quarters of an inch up onto this jacket. Okay, we don't want this hanging out the other end, so you kind of got to get it centered just right. Then when I start this, I start it in the middle and push the glue out to one end and then push it out to the other. So I keep it hot in the middle until I see it shrink down. Once I know I've got this middle all shrunk down, and it looks like a little hourglass there, then I just kind of push the heat to the end and shrink it down as I go. Make sure I come around the other side, do the same thing. Get it shrunk down nice and tight so you can see everything underneath it. And I come this way and push this out over the 
round jacket. So now we have this second layer of protect protection and it also adds some strain relief because this is now glued to the jacket. Now I come to this end and I just kind of squeeze it and make sure that glue is in between the wires too. So now if, if this wire is on the roof and you're driving in the rain and water is chasing up here, it's going to hit that and go out over this. And it uh, just gives you a good layer of protection. So then what we do is we want to stabilize this to the panel. So we take these little squares here that are made to stick zip ties through and we're using this black which is UV resistant and we're using this 3M VHB tape and to make sure it sticks well we use 91% isopropyl alcohol which strips off waxes and oils and different things quite cleanly and we want to kind of clamp in the middle of the panel so we want that clamp like right here so I want to clean the back of this module of any wax or fingerprints or whatever. Give it just a moment to dry. Doesn't hurt if it's cold outside to just kind of throw a little heat on there and make sure all that alcohol is gone. That surface is a little warm. Then we peel this layer off. Stretch this out, find the middle of the panel. Drop this down. It's now stuck to the panel. We take the zip, stick it in there, zip it down tight, and now it's got some strain relief here and no problem there. You know, I like to take a nice pair of flat sided side cutters and cut this thing off clean so there's no sharp edge there. If you use the bevel type, you can leave a sixteenth of an inch of really sharp plastic up there and if you go like that, you cut your finger. So, you know, when we ship out a system, each panel has 15 feet of this kind of wire. And uh, if you want to come up close and shoot the end of this, you can look in there and see that there is a white jacket with uh, number 10 we use on the roof and then there's filler on either side that keeps it nice and round. And so this is how we send out prepped panels. Uh, that's it for this one. Our next step is putting on our mounts.